Welcome to this video. This video is the last part of a series, which help you step by step to write your own first plastic unit subroutine. In the first video, basics of Ms. S plasticity were explained. In the next video, the algorithm which is used to solve Ms. S equations is depicted, then Jacobian matrix was described in a separate video. In this video, plastic unit subroutine is described based on the described equations in previous videos. If you are interested to start writing your own plastic unit please keep watching. Please support us making more videos by your like and comment. To write or understand a subroutine the first step is understanding subroutine interface. You can find UMIT's subroutine interface from Abacus documentation. From the subroutines guide, find UMIT, and then find subroutine interface. The first part of the interface contains subroutine name and all the input and output variables. Information at the beginning of the increment and strain increment are inputs and we should calculate information at the end of the increment as the output. Defining some of these variables are mandatory for all units and some are optional. In continue we describe common variables. The most important variable that should be defined at the end of the increment as output is Kochi stress. This variable brings the stress at the beginning of the increment as input, and we should update this variable with the stress at the end of the increment. State variables is an array that we can save state variables to it and use it in the next increment. The length of this array is defined in GUI by Depfer option. The next variable is Jacobian matrix which is a mandatory output. We described its necessity and role in a separate video. This variable is an input and contains strain tensor at the beginning of the increment. The next variable is an input and contains strain increment or change of the strain tensor in this increment. The name of the material which is defined in the GUI is transferred to UMIT by CM name. These three variables show dimension of the stress and strain tensors. The first one shows number of normal components of the stress tensor. The second one shows number of shear components of stress tensor. The third one is total number of the stress component. Obviously, the third one equals sum of the first and second one. For example, in three-dimensional problems, the stress array contains six components. Please note the arrangement of shear components in a unit subroutine. In this array there are three normal components, three shear components, and total of six stress components exist in this array. The next variable brings material constant which are defined in GUI to the unit. This statement tells the Abacus execution procedure to include this file. The file has been installed during Abacus installation and contains important installation parameters. This line is necessary in all UMIT subroutines. The next part of the interface defines types and dimensions of variables. The first line defines number of characters in the name of the material. Stress Strain And strain increment are one-dimensional arrays by length of n tens. Jacobian matrix is two-dimensional array with length of n tens by n tens. If in our unit we need more arrays we need to define their dimension in this part. For example, in the first row, flow direction and trial stress arrays with the length of n tens are defined. In the next line plastic and elastic strain increments are defined. Then we define some frequently used parameters with the exact amount. For example, in the first line 0, 1, 2, 3, and 6 are defined, and in the next line maximum number of iteration for Newton method and its tolerance are defined. In the next step, we create elastic constants of the material using the props variable and create the elastic stiffness matrix. The first component of props variable is elastic modulus. The second component is Poisson ratio. Then we calculate three times of bulk modulus and next two times of shear modulus. Then define shear modulus and three times of shear modulus. Finally, lamma's constant is calculated. Now we can construct elastic stiffness matrix using these constants. 
Please note that an UMIT subroutine strain array contains two times of shear strain components. So the elastic stiffness matrix is as follows. At first put lambda in all the first 3 by 3 submatrix. Then modify diagonal components as follows. In the next step, define these three diagonal components. Having the elastic stiffness matrix, we can calculate trial stress. Trial stress is calculated by assuming all the strain increment is elastic strain. Calculate trial stress increment and add it to the stress array to find trial stress. The next step is to calculate effective trial stress. For this purpose, at first, calculate the first three terms. Then, add the next three terms. And finally, divide it by 2, and calculate square root of the result. We need effective plastic strain at the end of the previous increment to find current yield stress. We can store effective plastic strain at the end of each increment in state variable and read it at the beginning of the next increment. Please note that, for the first increment this variable is zero. The third component of props is initial yield stress, and the fourth one is slope of linear strain hardening. This line calculates current yield stress. Using effective trial stress and current yield stress, calculate the yield function. In the case of elastic deformation which f is negative, delta p is zero. Otherwise we should calculate delta p by iterative solution. In this if statement we check that, whether material is in plastic region or not. In the plastic region, at first, calculate hydrostatic stress. Then construct the plastic flow direction. Please note the difference between the first and second three components based on this formula. In continue we need to predict effective plastic strain increment or delta P by Newton iterative solution. At first calculate yield function. This value should be zero after convergence, therefore we can use this value as the residual. Then set the iteration number to be one. The following while statement is repeated until exceeding the maximum number of allowable iterations or convergence of yield function to zero. Please note that by the first circumstance, we prevent endless while statement. Please also note that a tolerance is needed for checking convergence. In each iteration we do the followings, update the flow stress, calculate yield function, calculate effective plastic strain increment correction, update delta P, and update number of iteration. After this if statement we can update stress tensor, from this point we use the same relationships for elastic and plastic region. First, calculate plastic strain increment. Please note that this term is zero in elastic region. Then calculate elastic strain increment. Using elastic strain increment, update the stress. Finally, calculate total effective plastic strain and store it in the state variable to use it in the next increment. The last but not the least part of a UMIT is definition of Jacobian matrix. If material is an elastic region Jacobian matrix is the same as elastic stiffness matrix and no more calculation is needed. If material is plastic, the following calculation is required. Consider the relationship for Jacobian matrix which we have derived in previous video. In this equation, Q, N, and R, are as follows. We also name this part as lambda 1, the first line, checks whether material is plastic or not. The second line, calculates GR, the third line, calculates 2GR, the fourth line, calculates 3GR, next line, calculates lambda 1, and then 2GQ, is calculated. To understand the role of each term of this relationship, Let's show the second and third terms in the Jacobian matrix. The third term add lambda 1 to all the components of the first 3 by 3 submatrix. This line of the code adds lambda 1 to these components of the Jacobian matrix. 
the second term add 2 gr to the all diagonal components. This line modifies the first three diagonal components. The next three diagonal components are defined in this line. The first term of this relationship should be added to the all components of the Jacobian matrix as we do it in this line. Finally, do not forget to end your subroutines with these two lines. If this video was helpful, please let us know by a like or a comment. Do not forget to subscribe our channel and use more videos about mechanics and simulations.